Okay, so we've got an integral here from negative infinity to infinity. We're going to integrate 1 over x cubed plus 1 uh, dx. So how are we going about doing that? Well, there's no trig sub I can think of. There's no u sub I can think of. Integration by parts definitely not going to work. Um, the answer will involve the logarithm and the arctangent somewhere, but it looks quite complicated to get there. So there's an easy way we can do this. That's if we go into the complex world. So let's just transfer this into complex. So we'll go the integral of negative infinity to infinity, one over z cubed plus one dz. Okay, so now there's a formula we can use for this using the residues. So if you can find the residues of z cubed plus one, there is a formula for that, which says that this integral equals two pi i times s, we'll come on to s in a minute, and then plus pi i t. Okay, so what is s? What is t? Well, s is the sum of the residues above the real axis, and t equals sum of residues on the real axis. Now there's a couple of rules before we can progress any further on this. First of all, we need the polynomial in the denominator to be a degree of two or more more than the numerator. Well, as this is z cubed, that is okay. And the other one is that the residues on the real axis need to be simple, uh, simple poles. So no other kinds of residues are allowed. Well, z cubed plus one, um, we'll have to find the residues and the uh, poles of that function first. So for the poles of that, first of all, we need to solve z cubed plus one equals zero. So z cubed plus one equals zero gives us z cubed equals minus one. Okay, let's draw this on the complex plane. Minus one is here. This is our reals and this is our imaginaries. So bear in mind, we're interested in the residues on the real axis. So that's this one. So first of all, we can see minus one is a solution. So that's our first residue. And it's going to be a pole of order one. So that will give us our uh, value for T. So that will equal the residues of F at minus one. So we're going to let F equal one over Z cubed plus one. We'll just call that F of Z. Okay, so where's the other solution for this? There's going to be two more. Z cubed has three solutions. So we need something when multiplied by three will give us minus one. Well, we know that minus one in exponential form, in exponential form is e to the minus i pi, or e to the i pi. Let's just leave it as e to the i pi. Okay, so that will give us e to the i pi. So if we divide that by three, we're gonna get e to the i pi over three. And the conjugate of that to give us the other solution will be mean to the minus i pi over three. So as there's three solutions, and one is on the real axis, the other two being complex uh, numbers with a complex part, obviously e to the i pi over three will have a complex part, there will be a uh, conjugate. So e to the minus i pi over three and e to the pi over three. So just draw them on there. Okay. So as we're looking for the sum of the residues, sorry, as S is sum of the residues above the real axis, we're not really interested in this one. We're only interested in this one. 
So that will be the residues of f at e to the i pi over 3. Okay, so if we can just find those resi that residue and that residue, we're well on the way then to solving this integral. Okay, so as we've got zq plus 1 in the denominator, and when we plug in our poles of minus 1, we'll get 0 in there. So then we can use the g over h rule. So using the g over h rule for the residues, zq plus 1, so let's call this derivative of that. So derivative of with respect to z of z cubed plus 1, that equals 3z squared. So now what we can do, if we use 1 over 3z squared to calculate our residues, then we'll have each of these residues here. Okay, so residue of f at minus 1. Okay, if you plug in z for minus 1 here, that will give us our solution. So that will equal 1 over 3 times minus 1 squared. So that will just give us 1 third. And then the other residue of f at e to the i pi over 3. That will give us 1 over 3 e to the i pi over 3 squared. So e to the i pi over 3 and that's squared. So that will give us 1 third then e to the 2 i 2 pi over 3. Okay, that's our residues that we're interested in. So now what we need now is our Cartesian form of these. Well, this one is already Cartesian form, so that's okay. Now we need to find a Cartesian form of this one. So one third e to the i two pi over three. If we bring this into the numerator, we just put a minus sign and the exponential there. So then we can cross out the one and we can just write e to the minus i pi, sorry, e to the minus i, let's get that written correctly, minus 2i pi over 3. Okay, so let's use Euler's formula to get the, the Cartesian value of this. So e to the minus 2 pi pi over 3. This is the same as saying cosine of minus 2 pi over 3 plus i sine minus 2 pi over 3. Okay, so both angles will be the same. Okay, what's cosine of minus 2 pi over 3? Well, that is minus 1 half. And then sine of minus 2 pi over 3 is going to be root 3 over 2 but minus. So we change this to a minus and then we'll have root 3 over 2. Okay so we've, value, we've evaluated now the value of these residues so now we can go straight into this formula here. So let's just box this off and box this off. Okay, so now we're going to bring down this formula here, 2 pi i s plus pi i t. Okay, now because we know what s and t is going to be, we just plug in the values here, and that's going to give us the answer to our integral. So we've got 2 pi i times s. Well, s is the sum of the residues above the real axis. So that's one third times our e to the minus i 2 pi over 3. So that's one third. So we can just put the third here. That's just a constant multiple. And then we can just write that in there. So minus one half 
minus i root 3 over 2 and then we'll add pi i t so pi i and t is a residue on the real axis so that's this one so that's just multiplied by one third okay right let's just go through the algebra carefully now so this one that's just going to be pi i over three that's fine this one here we can distribute the twos here and cancel so that cancels with that so that eliminates all of the twos so now we've got pi i over three times minus one so that becomes minus pi i over three and then pi i over three times this one well i times minus i will give us positive one so that just leaves the pi and the root three and the three that's plus so pi root three over three okay so minus pi i over three plus pi i over three these cancel out so therefore what we can say is the answer to our integral so the integral from negative infinity to infinity of 1 over x cubed plus 1 dx it's just going to be the same as this so it equals pi root 3 over 3 which would just be the same as pi divided by root 3 and that is our answer and that would be much easier than going through doing the integration for this one. Okay.